Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is May 18th, 2018. And as I mentioned last week, we're going to do a quick preview of the sales coming up in Hong Kong at the end of this month at Bonhams, Christie's, and Sotheby's. Um, we have posted all the catalogs around the website right now, and you can find them over on the Dealers and Auctioneers page, either individually by Auction House, or you can click the big bookcase here, and it'll bring you over here. And uh, as many of you know, uh, they're all stacked up here, a lot of catalogs. But we're going to be dealing with uh, the ones basically in the top two rows, and we're going to go through just some of the catalogs, not all of them. There are way too many to go through um, for, the, for the Hong Kong series, uh, Sotheby's, has two sales, Bonhams has one, and Christie's has six or seven, including paintings. It's, it's quite something. But at any rate, we're going to start here. We're going to start at the Bonhams sale. They have some really good things uh, this time around over there, some, and, and some interesting. Bonhams has been getting more and more interesting collections, I've noticed. They're really focusing on that, and uh, um, old collections especially seems to be something that they're uh, focusing their energies on. And uh, uh, when, you, when you look at their, their listings, typically you're not seeing a lot of things that have been on the market lately too much or in the last 20 years, with uh, one exception, which is the cover lot to this, and we'll get to that in a minute. But at any rate, they have this. This is a, a really attractive Chin Lung period, 18 inch tall. Uh, it's not marked, but a uh, cloisonne vase with eight Buddhist emblems on it and these extremely elaborate phoenix handles on the side. It's an elegant, elegant piece. And I like the way they tapered the foot at the bottom of this. It sort of fades in. It's very nice. And uh, estimated $130,000 to $190,000. All right, so we'll see how it does. It's interesting how many how many, how many um, moon flasks seem to be turning up. Um, unfortunately, the ones in London didn't do very well this week. They didn't sell. And we're going to talk about those uh, in the, in the, when, we, when we sort of do an autopsy on the auction results. And uh, it, it, the, what happened in London this week it was pretty strange. They had some very odd results. They had items that didn't sell, and they had uh, things that were great, like the, like the butter lamp that brought 1.7 million. But the moon flask didn't, didn't make their reserves, apparently. So uh, we'll take a look at that and try to figure out what on earth happened. All right, we'll do that, try to get to that next week when they're all done. And uh, then there's this. This is in the sale. This is a really cool item. It's an amber and gilt bronze box, uh, 18th century, probably early Chin Lung or um, around there, I would guess. And uh, but exceptional quality. And it's got chillungs running around the outside, and then the central panel with the giant dragon in it and all that. Um, very attractive. And uh, here's another view of it here. You can see the interior. It has some sort of nice liner. And uh, a beautiful example, and uh, it's estimated at 190 to 250 thousand. These are pretty rare, and if you're sitting there wondering, I haven't seen one of these before. They don't turn up very often. Amber boxes are quite rare, and uh, this is a nice one. So um, we'll see how it does. All right, that'll be interesting. That'll be an interesting result because um, the, the the market seems to be more and more interested now in more uh, in esoteric things. So we'll see how they do. Now this is the um, the uh, the most the probably I think the highest estimated thing in the sale. It's a beautiful imperial white jade phoenix vessel, gong they call them, and um, we'll get a, a picture of it here. We'll flip over here. Here it is, with this uh, phoenix with a with a with a with a, uh, a cup built into it, so forth. And what's curious about this 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 exact uh, uh, jade sold just five years ago at Doyle's. And uh, we have a picture of it, and there it is. Okay, it sold in 2013. It had an estimate of just twenty to thirty thousand dollars, and it brought 1.55 million. All right. So um, I'm going to be very curious to see how this does uh, this time around in uh, in Hong Kong, seeing as it was on the market fairly recently. They smartly, um, however, uh, made the estimate within the range that it sold for last time. So it has a million dollar estimate, which means the reserve can't be above the low estimate. It's probably, you know, probably pretty close to it, I would think, if the guy's into it for a million five. And uh, who knows what the circumstances are as to why he's selling it, but uh, uh, we'll see how it does. It's a beautiful object nonetheless, so it'll, it'll probably do okay, um, given its history. All right. And then they have this collection. This is a, a, a collection of European um, uh, Chinese carved boats. And um, um, they're done in uh, white jade, uh, greenish white jade, rock crystal quartz, and so forth. And uh, Bonhams back in 2012 handled another part of this same collection, 
uh, for the family. And uh, as, as I recall, it all did very, very well. They sold it in London. And if you, if you blow up the uh, listing, you'll see why. Um, these pieces were all bought in the 1930s to the 1950s. Um, and they were bought from great sources, John Sparks, Sidney Mars, uh, uh, Moss, um, C.T. Lou, Micon and Compagnie in Paris, all that stuff. So they, they have good provenance, good history, and they've been in a collection for a long time. And the pieces are quite beautiful, and the estimates seem uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pr pretty reasonable. They're not, they didn't go crazy on the estimates here. Um, you know, some of them are in the ten to twenty thousand dollar range, and others are in the, you know, fifty to one hundred thousand dollar range for the more elaborate ones, like this. Okay, it's just a, a beautiful example, very intricately carved, and uh, uh, they should, they all should do pretty well. And these are fairly good size. These are, you know, a seven to eleven inches long. Uh, they're nice sized jades. They're not little tiny jades. Okay, this one I think is really terrific. It's got the biggest estimate, though. It's it's two hundred to three hundred thousand, but it's a fully carved boat, all right, uh, uh, which is quite unusual with a spectacular stand under it. Okay, and um, here's one with chains, jade chains, which is, everybody knows if you watch, pay attention to jade carving. Car jade chains is very difficult, and it goes on and on. And there is a, um, a rock crystal one coming up here. It is, which is pretty fascinating to look at. It's estimated at 38 to 50, 55 or 58,000. There it is, but carved from a beautiful piece of rock crystal. If you ever looked at rock crystal and seen the other things that are carved, you can only imagine how difficult this was to carve. Okay, and then the last thing I want to look at in here is this. This is a, a really beautiful uh, Qin Lung uh, period um, uh, sort of, uh, you know, a, a, a copper red vase, uh, Mei Ping vase, but beautifully uh, done. It's around eight inches tall and uh, nice provenance. Here it is. Okay, it's been in. Uh, it's been within the same family um, uh, since uh, 1960. Well, it was in a collection uh, in, in, all, all through the first half of the 20th century and goes back to um, the uh, 19th century. All right, and uh, it's just a lovely example. Uh, we can bring that in a little bit. Good color, just glows. Beautiful shape all the way down. And uh, on the next page, it's interesting, they have a, a good shot of the base of this thing. And um, uh, with, with a Blewett and Son label on it and an Ashmolean loan, muse uh, the Ashmolean Museum, apparently it was on loan there in 1903. And that's about as good as Provenance gets on things. And uh, it's carrying a pretty, pretty good size estimate, uh, 130 to 190,000. But it is marking period and it's, it's, it's a beautiful piece with good Provenance. So let's see how that does. It should do okay. All righty. And uh, now on to this. This is scholarly art from the collection of Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Gerard Hawthorne. And this is a really interesting uh, catalog. If you like scholars, objects, and boxes, they pretty much hit the mother load on it and, uh, with this collection. And uh, we'll, we'll get over here and flip in. Hold on. Here's the beginning. They're the collectors. They do a nice job with this uh, catalog. And um, let's see. Uh, there we go. You start out with this. This is a really nice. A lot of, he, he was this, these people were collectors of inlaid wooden wares. So you have things like this. It's a very, very beautiful 17th century inlaid box uh, with beautifully done brass uh, uh, handles and uh, just elegantly colored uh, with all the different types of stones that they would use, malachite and, and uh, so forth, all through it. Nice pigments and uh, beautifully done, all right? And it's, uh, it's, these aren't terribly big. It measures um, 14 by 15 inches and has a twenty to $30,000 estimate, which isn't, uh, which isn't all outrageous, I don't think, for that, okay? And uh, I have to look down because I have uh, page numbers here to go through. This is one of the great things in the sale. This is a, 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 a fabulously done inlaid box, um, Zitan, by um, uh, Zhao Zhu. And he was a uh, Jai Jing period um, uh, uh, craftsman. And he was noted for doing these extremely colorful boxes. And um, this, is, this is just one of them. And uh, you can blow it up and see the work that he did on it. And what's really, the scene on this box, if you'll take a minute to look at it, it's interesting. 
he actually weathered the table because they're outside in a rustic setting under this fabulously done, all inlaid uh, pine tree. And they're reading scrolls. And on the table are um, little scholar's objects, a, 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 you know, a crackleware vase in this very pretty um, uh, archaistic bronze form uh, porcelain vase and some liver red pieces. And they're reading a scroll. And the, they have a, a lady down here who's uh, fanning the uh, fanning the kettle under, under the flames to heat the water, to make tea and all that. It's really interesting. And uh, it's, 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 it's quite rare. And it's estimated at 190 to 200, uh, 319,000. That's a big window, isn't it? 100, 190 to 300, I don't know how they did that. They may not know exactly what it's worth, I guess. Um, and it's, it's about uh, three inches by six inches. These are not big boxes but uh, by a famous artist and well done. And there's another box in this sale by the same artist. There are a couple of them. The other one has a slightly lower uh, estimate on it, but is uh, very, very nice as well, okay? And uh, then there is this, uh, this I thought was really pretty. I like brush pots. And this is a beautiful brush pot. It's Zetan, also inlaid, uh, 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 17th century. Uh, they, that's as close as they got to dating it. It's about five inches tall but just beautiful quality. And if you flip to the next page, here it is. They included some very good shots of the sides of each panel, okay? And uh, you can see that the workmanship, and this is terrific, and the wood, uh, the wood grain is excellent on this. And, and I, like the, I like the top piece here. Where they, notice how they use the striations in the malachite to really look like a rocky, like a scholar, big giant outdoor scholar's rock coming up, okay? Just really attractive. And uh, the estimate on this is uh, fairly stiff. It's, it's not b beyond the pale of uh, 75 to 100,000. All right, we'll see how that does. But it's uh, quite, a, quite an attractive thing. And uh, then on to uh, this. This is, I think, the, uh, this is something you do not see very often at all. This, it, well, you, it looks like a gilt bronze. It is not. This is porcelain. It's a gilded porcelain Buddha figure. Chinlung, Markan period, and it's dated to 1771. This is an extremely rare thing, extremely unusual. And again, like some of the other things that are in this in, in this sale and in the in and in the in the uh, bottom sale, like the amber box, this is something else you don't see very often. Um, uh, this is a, a, a very rare type of uh, porcelain, obviously, and it's got these beautiful, uh, uh, you know, blue uh, lapis blue enamels, and then she's set with stones. And the only place you can really see the porcelain is here at, at the bottom where the rain mark is, okay? Let me see. I think there's a picture of the rain mark here. Whoops. Flipped the wrong page. Hold on a second. There. There it is, okay? There's the, uh, uh, the Chinlung rain mark. And it's also cyclically dated. So that, that's a pretty exciting object. And it's estimated at um, uh, 128 dollars to $192,000. And I, 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 that's it. that to me seems like a pretty reasonable estimate for something like this. But we'll see. We'll see. It's hard to say these days. All right. And then on to this, the, the Nita Matreya. This is an absolute, if you like early bronzes, this is an absolutely outstanding catalog to, to, to get. Come to the site and read it. Um, the uh, paper in it was written by Bob Mowry, who is a consultant with Christie's, but he's also um, uh, the head of the Harvard Museum um, uh, art Museum. He's one of the great scholars in the world on early Chinese art, uh, uh, you know, Sung pieces and back, especially. He loves Sung. He's a big Sung ceramics and, and uh, guy, but he's really a whiz on early bronzes. And this is uh, the, this catalog is prepared by him, and it was it's unbelievably well done. And uh, let's start with uh, let's see where are we going to go here. We're going to go to page twenty first. Take a good look at this bronze. There it is. Okay, now this bronze, um, according to uh, uh, Mr. Maori, was made in the in the in the late Sui to early uh, Tang Dynasty, and um, it's very hard. These are very very hard to date because of the evolutions that these figures went through as time went on, you know, from the fourth century, fifth century, sixth century, and in this catalog he lays it all out, uh, which is fabulous. And he explains the, how the how they went about dating it, and, and they got down as close close enough to say it was either made at the very end of the Sui Dynasty or literally in the first couple years of the Tang, all right. 
and he'll, in his writings he explains about the uh, about the way the robes are folded, the the, 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 uh, the quantity of the robes, the way the neck of the uh, figure is done. These um, these sort of sausage turnings are more typical of Tang pieces. That's why they think it might have been done in the early Tang period. But the shape of the head is more typical of Sui pieces. And uh, if you look at the um, the way the robes are folded, uh, they're not voluminous. There's not mountains of robes draping down the way they did later, but more typical of the Sui uh, era. And then you have these uh, individual, which are, if you haven't seen these before, these are very cool. Uh, each foot is resting on its own lotus pad. And uh, during the process of researching this, he came up with this. This is a, uh, a, temp um, a cave painting uh, done uh, around the same time. Um, with uh, another Buddha in a very similar seated position, flanked by uh, other um, uh, figures. And uh, he goes into uh, uh, great length in this catalog about this bronze. So if you're interested in these bronzes, I would urge you to uh, uh, take the time and um, um, read through it, okay? And they also included in the catalog some really elegant photography. Now this figure is not big. It's only about 12 inches tall. These tend to be small. And it obviously has a later base added to it, but uh, it's uh, really quite something. And um, let's see, well, there's one more thing I wanted to, let's see here. There it is, okay. And the estimate is upon request, and this is lot 2801. And uh, it came from the, it came, it has a very good provenance, by the way. It's, the, it's called the Need of Bronze for um, uh, uh, Minucci. Um, uh, uh, Nida, and he was a sort of a legendary Japanese dealer and collector. Uh, some of his things were sold off in the uh, uh, 1990s and the early 2000s, and uh, uh, his things have been in books. They had a big exhibition back in the 1980s of, of some of his bronzes uh, on very early bronzes, and that's where this came from. Okay, So it's got impeccable provenance, a great write-up, very educational, and uh, an absolutely beautiful object. All right. And now let's mosey on over to Christie's, the, the three Chunlung rarities. Um, there's a, a moon flask, a vase, and then a pair of small Hu vases in this sale. This is just a three auction or three item uh, catalog, uh, but really, uh, uh, really, really, really beautiful stuff. And let's see here. We're going to skip over to page uh, 20. There we go. The first is this, the, um, the blue and white moon flasks. Like I said, there's a lot of moon flasks showing up. I don't know why. And uh, this one came from the Chow collection many years ago, this particular one. It's estimated at $7.8 to $10 million. And the scene on it is a famous scene, uh, the landscape scene of the, of the farmer tilling uh, the soil. And there's a very fine write-up in here. Uh, by Rosemary Scott about the history of this uh, particular drawing and its symbolism in Chinese culture. Um, and as you can see, we've, like I mentioned last week, we've changed the way these things record their, the resolution on these new catalogs, so they're much sharper. You can really blow them up and see better than the other one. And uh, each side of it has a different scene depicting a farmer uh, tilling his soil, and it goes back to uh, 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 paintings and so forth that were done um, but well, the Young Chen Emperor and the Chin Lung Emperor, and there's a whole uh, section on it in here that uh, it goes into some detail. They also show some other examples of this same uh, flask, or very similar one, one in the Walters Art Museum, and then the other one in the, um, um, what museum is this? Uh, in the uh, Tianjin Municipal Museum. There's one in Daotsai, okay? And it has, also has a very good write-up on all of it, and uh, I urge you to... Uh, Come over and read it, okay? Uh, Rosemary Scott, as you know, is a fabulous writer. And um, she's, you know, she and Bob Mowry and those guys, they just do great stuff. And uh, then you have this very nice Yang Tsai um, yellow vase. It's a good size vase. It measures 15 inches. It has the 100 boys pattern on it. Beautifully done. Uh, the quality of the enamels on this are just exceptional. And when you blow it up, you can really, really get into the scene. And this hundred boys pattern appears on a lot of Chin Lung bases. It was a very popular theme. And uh, in this uh, particular catalog, they show um, other examples of where this can be seen. But if you look at this one uh, very carefully, you'll see it's quite a bit uh, better than some of the other Chin Lung examples around. 
um, in my opinion anyway. And it's estimated at six and a half to ten million dollars. Um, I guess they agree too. But the thing is, is that this was also sold at Christie's in Hong Kong about, um, what, just 15 years ago. So, you know, everybody's going to go and look and see what it brought back then and then calculate accordingly. So this will be a, another one of these tests of um, how willing the market is to accept uh, things that have been on and off the market before. And here are some images of other examples, okay, and so forth, okay. And then we get over to these. These are the little uh, green enamel bases. These are pretty small. They're about four inches tall. They're beautifully done, obviously. And uh, these were also from the Chow collection. And they're estimated at two and a half to two point nine million dollars. Uh, again, Chin Lung and nice uh, enameled interiors. And the seal marks on the bottom are against a turquoise ground and done in gold relief. Nice raised, uh, nice raised work there. Very neat, perfectly done, of course. And um, we'll see how these do. But they're extremely pretty. But there were some other monochromes sort of on this flavor a couple of years ago that came up. I can't remember where exactly. And they didn't sell, okay? Um, so we'll see how they do. They did include a comparable at, a, at another piece that's in the uh, Palace Museum in Beijing. All righty. And then lastly, we're going to take a look at this, Celestial Immortals, the Tabor family uh, Tian Chu Ping. Um, this is being sold to benefit the Philbrook Museum, Philbrook Museum of Art. And um, this may be the, uh, the, the very best of one of these that has, ever, has been on the market uh, in a very long time. Um, and here's, they, they did a good job with the catalog also. There's a nice write-up uh, on the museum itself, and they did include a lot of very fine uh, detail shots of the quality of work of this vase. And they also explain in some detail um, how difficult these vases to make. The shape is very hard to achieve, and they go into it uh, in some detail, and they actually compare it to other examples. And here's the museum itself. You can flip through it, and you can read about how it ended up in the museum and who donated it. And I want to... Uh, Let's see here. Hold on a second. Here we go. Open this little thing up. And uh, the trick with these vases are is that is that they, the, because of the shape, they're very prone to collapsing. And if you if you look at this body, the way this is done, and to attach this rather heavy long neck onto it, um, they tended to collapse. And this one is beautifully decorated, and it's got the uh, uh, all the precious objects and so forth on it. And this form was originated in the Ming Dynasty, but the necks were shorter. The, on the Ming examples, the 15th, 16th, early 16th century ones, the neck sort of went up to the, the neck went up to about there. And um, getting them uh, so that they could get the shape of the body right, the celestial shape, um, which is symbolic of the heavens, um, and a whole bunch of other things. So I won't go into it all, but um, it's in the it's in the catalog. You can read it. Um, they, go, they do show the, the vase in enormous detail, and they show how the shape compares to other known examples. And the shape of this one is about as perfect as you will ever see, um, because the, the shoulder doesn't sh slope up too much. Um, uh, uh, other examples, the main examples, the shoulder here, they would build the shoulder up. They would change the shape a little to uh, make sure that the uh, neck didn't collapse the piece while it was being fired. And this one, they managed to do it just right so that the body of the vase is, you know, nice and spherical. And then you have this beautiful tapered in and then flared out neck and these absolutely amazing colors. The colors on this vase are just stupendous. And you have to realize that when they decorated these, um, they outlined everything in blue, very finely outlined. And if you make the slightest mistake, you can't undo it. Because the blue is being done onto, the underglaze blue is being done right onto the raw paste, and it's absorbed in instantly on contact. You can't get it out, okay? So it's, it's, it's really quite a, quite a feat. And, the, and then the enameling, of course, is, is added over it. And it's, the, the shading and the, the enameling on this face is just absolutely striking, all right? And as I recall, this is an estimate on request item also. Oh, no, it's not. It's estimated at nine to twelve million dollars. Okay, um, and we'll see. All right, but it's 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 a heck of a vase. Um, and do come and look at these catalogs and take advantage of the fact that more and more these catalogs are being, you know, very 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 similar to reference books. 
And of course, you can come over to the site and look at them at any time because once these sales are over, Christie's and Sotheby's and Bonhams, they all remove the catalogs, unfortunately, unless you have a print copy, okay? And um, that's it. And we'll get around to the newsletter uh, later on today and do the video for that. And uh, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll do a follow-up on, uh, on the London sales last uh, this past week and sort of take a look at what happened and, and why some things sold and why some things didn't sell. It's uh, rather difficult uh, to understand somewhat. All righty. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.